Uh, next, I'd like to call um, uh, Brother Dinesh um, to talk about the three Ds. Duty, Devotion, and Discipline. Respected elders, honored, honored guests, and my dear brothers and sisters, Om Shri Sai Ram. For the last one hour I've been standing here trying to get our audio visual fixed, but hopefully it will work from there. And we're going to have to allow us more time because there will be a lot of you there between the two. Uh, firstly, I want to actually thank the organizing committee for all the hard work and dedication you have done to make this uh, event successful. And I would like to thank each and every devotee in the organization. It is through your support the organization can sustain itself. Thank you so much and God bless you, Siren, to you all. Brothers and sisters, uh, over the last three to four years, the world has experienced unprecedented turmoil. On the one hand, we have this pandemic of COVID, the Ukrainian Russian war, and then today we have the Turkey earthquake and disasters. But disaster has not been very far from you. our own home, our own organization that sustained a huge jolt, a break that has shaken the devotees to their very core. Brothers and sisters, they split our friends, they split our family, they create a lot of discord amongst ourselves. The question that we need to ask is, what is the reason behind this confusion and consequent suffering in our organization? I uh, to, to actually uh, discuss this, can you go to the next slide? Oh yeah, what did I put there? Certain slope? Yes. Yes. Uh, I'm sure some of you will be familiar with certain slope. Uh, certain was a robber in America. He used to rob banks, go, uh, get caught, go to jail, come out, and rob banks again. Uh, he became a minor in the doing that. Uh, and some I reporter asked him, Mr. Sutton, why do you do that? What did, what did Mr. Sutton say? Because that's where the money is. You know when Brother Ivy was talking about it? That's where the money is, that's why, that's why he robs the banks. So, we're answering this question, why we as an organization which has been created by a divine reincarnation of Kali Yuga, Sai Baba, who, through his hands, organization has been created. What is the problem? There must be something that we're missing. So, next slide, uh, I'll, I'll talk about... I have to keep on doing Okay. So, what does Swami say, uh, uh, that what we are missing? Uh, he says, I will not go into the uh, Talmud uh, trans, but I'll talk about it in, in English. He says, look here, it was my dharma to tell you, now it is up to you to do your karma. He's done his dharma. He's told us what our dharma is, uh, is up to us to perform. Next slide, please. Now, if you uh, really want to look at what has he told us, uh, I think we should focus on the dharma side of it. And uh, let us try and understand what dharma really means, because uh, they, uh, in English dharma is said it is duty, it is uh, law, it is order, it is justice, there are lots of voices. But remember, dharma is a Sanskrit word. It has no equivalent in any other language. It has a wide amount, a very number of meanings. And uh, you cannot justify talking about dharma in English translation because it's no equivalent in any language. Uh, and you really look at dharma itself. If you look at the, uh, the, uh, the root word dharma, uh, the root word for dharma is dra or tri or dru. And it shares the same root as dharti, dharti is mother earth. So if you want to understand what the duty, what dharma really means, it is something that supports, that upholds, that sustains and that preserves. So if you apply it as a broad meaning, that is what dharma is all about. Uh, anything that will specifically uh, preserve and sustain and support. That's what Dharti does. The optimistic uh, view is that Dharma is nothing but the truth. Next slide. I have to make sure that I'm talking to what I'm doing. Okay. So, Baba says that Satya is the basis of Dharma. He said, obviously, it lays down the individual and social duties and obligations. But he says, you know, all the human values originate from that, Satya. And what he says, Satyam Nasti Paro Dharma. There is no greater dharma than, uh, than upholding the truth. 
So implications for us in the organization. What is the greatest dharma Swami is not in his physical form? Upon his teaching, which is the truth, which has been, which is amongst us. Uh, and that is our really great dharma. Swami says, Satya is not merely what you see, what you hear, what you experience. It is beyond it. If you go to Buddha Bharati, uh, you see lots of Swami sayings. And Swami says, truth is more fundamental than an atom. That's what he means. It is beyond that you can experience. He says, out of Satya, the whole universe has come out. With Dharma, the whole universe is sustained. Every planet, every law has to follow its duty. Otherwise, uh, this will have no universe. It will be destruction. Dharma sustains the universe. And we are getting climate emergencies in this world. Okay? We, and the climate emergencies are happening because of atharmic uh, activities of mankind. They say that if all the birds and insects die within, within two years, death will disappear. If all the earthworms die, it will disappear within 18, 18 months, uh, uh, three years. If all men disappear from the earth, this earth will thrive. <laughs> this is the greed uh, of mankind that is creating the destruction. So Dharma is really a reflection of Satya, which is beyond our normal understanding. I'm emphasizing what Brother Arvind said yesterday. I know, I think it's written there, so you, if you haven't really registered that, Dharma Rakshati Rakshita. English translation, Dharma protects those who protect Dharma. Simple as that. And another question, Dharma will destroy you if you do not, if you try and destroy Dharma if you, if you go beyond the limits of Dharma. And therefore the portion from the saints and sages is, please don't try to damage blind Dharma. It will blind you, damage you. Very important, if you forget everything, don't, don't forget this. In our life, we all face these uh, moral dilemmas, or dharmic dilemmas, or poor dharma center. A big example would be in Ramayana, not go there for the sake of time. Mahabharata is a good example, all the events before and after Draupadi's was where were attempts were made to destroy her. You know what happened? Brother Arvind again said that he thought, it's not like my token. Uh, <laughs> uh, what they did was, Every person involved in the academic activity was annihilated. Even people who were watching did not help this court destroy it. Even if they were passively involved, did not have didn't do anything, they had to be destroyed. And I think uh, the days of Mahabharata you uh, was started. Brothers and sisters, do not minimize what's happening in our organization. This is the big, we have put out terms like a small one. This is a big thing. Split in our organization and the attendant issues and full consequences of this, I'm telling you, is not fully realized. Uh, there's the pervasion of dharma in human values, which we know, I'm not really going to in detail, but don't take this lightly, just go into your heart, learn from, uh, from Brother Arvind, from all the speakers from overseas, from your seniors and all everyone here, make your judgment, follow Swami, and I'm not speaking anything apart from Swami's word. Uh, you judge for yourself. Now, coming back to uh, the disturbing of, uh, attempted disturbing of Mata Jokhi. So, uh, uh, Krishna Bhagavan said, Adharma act meant all involved in it needed to be destroyed. So, the term, if you damage Dharma, you will be destroyed. If kings and the princesses could not actually uh, protect the modesty of a princess or a queen, how would they protect the subjects they have to go? The other thing we have to remember, brothers and sisters, is Adharma in a family, in a society, in an organization will destroy the family. Will destroy the organization or system, have no doubt about it. I'm going to say that again and again. Onus is on us to stand up to Adharma, be resolute, like Brother Arvind said, hold on to Swami's feet. Find out what exactly is not easy. There were great people like Vishnu Mitama, they actually misunderstood the Adharma, they didn't do anything. We are nothing. Do such things, do whatever you have to do, but hold on to his feet to know what is truth, what is right, what is right now. So Krishna Bhagavan says disturbing of Draupadi was disturbing of our Sanskriti, of our uh, Sabhyata and of our Maria civilization, culture and the bounds of dignity and morality. Therefore he says to the Padmavas, the sadness is not only and that is not only yours, it is for our past, present and future generations. And he said, but he cautions the, the he says to the Pandu brothers, you and your brother put you and your wife, your wife on the stake. 
you did not protest, you did not do anything. So you have to drink the poison of embarrassment, do your crushing, repent. Uh, what is the implication for it? What is the implication? Think about it in our own hearts and our minds. Next slide. So brothers and sisters, perversion of Swami's human values, they has happened. Okay? We can't bury our head in the sand and say nothing. We have to first understand, then you can adjust. Whole structure has been affected to some. We have very beautiful people in our organization. Structure set by Swami was his divine command, okay, that has been landed upon. At least my plea to everyone here is let us not support any kind of distraction of this. Let us hold on to Swami's human purpose. Uh, remember, spirituality Swami has said many times, not a business deal with God. Uh, you listen to uh, people who have a direct experience. Swami has disciplined people who have left the dharma just to even get his darshan. He told a doctor who ran from the clinic to hear his darshan, he told, uh, told the superintendent, Hey, can you know what? Why is he here? I mean, if you have already doing Swami's work, his darshan is, you don't need it. You have already had so many darshan. I mean, I'm just saying, just as an example. Now, uh, next slide, but this. Dharma is one person who has multiple dharmas. I mean, you can be a, a dharma of a son, same son to a brother, a father, husband, a sign devotee, a leader. Uh, there will be overlap, there will be some conflict. So I am putting a question here. Okay, so there's a situation about dharma. You are an office bearer and book for an important meeting to take part in a several project in your organization. And then recently you've been asked, hey, there's a birthday party for your close friend. Uh, don't answer it, okay? I'm just telling you. They are just uh, giving an example. What is your duty here? What is your dharma? So, you know, what does the scripture say? The scripture say in the event of conflict between individual and social dharma, the social dharma takes precedence. He who understands his duty to society truly lives, all others can be counted among the dead. I'm reminded of an incident in December. We had a meeting, a Zoom meeting with Brother. And then the ready for uh, the assigned 100 program and introduced lots of people on the program. And but I've been sitting there. It was so humbling to see him. Not humbling because you're sitting there. But that was the same day I think Brother Arvind's father had passed away before that meeting. Can you imagine that he thought his duty was more initially to come in for the meeting, support whatever has to be done. Look at the amount of sacrifice, the, the meaning of what of this is there. And there's a lot of examples of people in my in this organization I see through medical camps. I won't have time to name individually, but you remember we see that in front of us all the time. Do not underestimate yourself. We have there. Just be brave and say that yes, you can be this one. Now, this is a question and answer session. Swami, not my questions, not my answers. Swami is given the answers. So uh, a devotee asked for me, this is a question answer session with him uh, when he talks about rules and general. What should I do, a devotee asked for me, if I, uh, if I consider an instruction issued by a court nature inappropriate or unfeasible? Swami said, hey, do not wait or argue just for the sake of argument. Let your words be a few, fair and pleasing, soft speech adds sweetness to living. He also says, if you feel any doubt regarding whether it's correct or not, Talk them all with the leader alone, which I see the leaders like, example, example leaders do here. Uh, talk with the leader in a spirit of friendliness. So the leader may not be right, but don't go out emailing everyone and doing a group email and all this. That's not the way to do it. Do not disregard or modify those instructions at any cost, Swami says. The leader has to pay attention to the overall situation, which may not be so clear to you at the moment. This is a good example of what happened in 2021. There are lots of things happened. There were lots of facts that came. The leaders, oh, man. Brother Guna, he lost probably more of his hair. And the leader <laughs> became the chairperson. Attending those meetings, we've been in contact with all the guys, uh, the leaders everywhere. They know the facts. The problem is the facts when they're sent in our website, no one reads them. But everyone wants something new. Okay? And they'll look at the other website. Uh, so that's why. The leader knows, so uh, give it a chance, go and explore. Another question here is about delinquent. Uh, how, how, Swami, how do you uh, handle delinquent members? How do you do that? Swami says two things is for leaders do not enforce rules without mercy or thoughtful consideration. 
give chance to reform the group. But he says, do not have anyone in who would rather be outside your group on account of their habit, indifference towards, especially instructions given by me. He says, for oh, my owner is your owner, your owner is my owner. This is your unit, your organization. Uh, it, is, uh, it is not your unit, not your organization, it is my message. In my institution, minds must mutually harmonize. And he says that for this is the fruit, uh, fruit, fruition will be your jnana. Now, um, this is not personal to anyone here, okay? It's a question I'm throwing, if you want to understand that There's an announcement in the center, I'm sure this is the main Sign house means cleaning because of plus. Brothers and sisters, what is your duty? Who should attend to this? Don't answer here. Discuss it in your quietness of your home or your study circles or the new, next few sessions today and tomorrow. Same question. Roma the school has its evaluation for the Ministry of Education. It's clean up. What should be responsible for this year? Okay. Uh, should we see, who should we see them? Now, this is uh, another question. Uh, you think about this all about Dharma. Young side devotees mainly in love with a girl of different caste. Uh, parents are not happy with the reunion. What is the duty of the son in this situation? What is the duty of parents here? Please, it's not specific to anyone. Okay? I'm throwing these things through so that you understand. Uh, so, brothers and sisters, some food for thought. When you travel to Puttaparthi, you see respect here for elders. You wear decent clothes. You speak sweetly to everyone. Everyone wants to be doing some form of seva there. Why don't we have the same attitude back at home, brothers? Think about it. Why the double standard you have? We have. And every organization has given us so much of being part of this process of organization from the setup. Uh, organization can only sustain if we all do our part in the organization. Remember, who is the organization? You are the organization. We have, we owe this current debt to, to the organization, to the members of the organization. So you have to think about it. Tomorrow someone tempts you of better parenting. Will you change your parents? Someone says, I'll give you more of this and more of this. Will you change your parents? Ask this question. I'm on, you need to contemplate on this. So brothers, this organization can only function with the structure, with the discipline and process. Think hard if you are maintaining the discipline and helping to it, or are you making it worse? One last question and answer session was uh, this uh, Swami's message about spreading my message, not my name. One devotee asked, is one of the objectives of Satya Sai organization to promote and spread the name of Sai? So he says clearly, organization named after me are not to be used for publicizing my name or creating a new cult around my worship. They must try to spread interest in all the sadhanas, but they must render several to have less sick, disease, and all those things. So, brothers and sisters, no, it is very clear. Don't advertise in the newspapers. Satya Sai Baba's rogue is coming, come all of Fiji, all of New Zealand, come to the centre just for political reasons. Don't do that. He doesn't want it. You are defying Swami. Believe me, uh, we can discuss about this later. No? Okay, S uh, Sister Nithya, you asked me to do three deals. I have only done one do deal, but just to justify, I put one side here, so we won't have time. Uh, it is all Swami's words, not my words. Swami says this is very really vital for every living being. For men, it is actually more important like your spinal cord. If you don't have a spinal cord, there's the Brahma done. This is so important. Uh, it won't really, uh, you always want discipline uh, will ruin you. Uh, and it is defines discipline what it is. The important thing that I've learned from Swami is that don't waste time. Time is gold. It will never come back. It's the important part of it. And discipline cannot be acquired from books. It cannot be learned from teachers. It is a sub-value of dharma. If you understand dharma, discipline will come out. Uh, that's all I have to say for that. Devotion, bhakti. You know, uh, bhakti, Swami says, the easiest part of devotion, we know that. But remember one thing that I, I think is important that we do not realize. Bhakti is derived from the root word, Swami says, bhaj, with the suffix ti. Ti means seva. So, seva is the most important part of bhakti. Uh, worship the divine through seva. Swami asks this question and clarifies because that's why he's asking this question. He asks, is seva the cause of bhakti or is it a consequence of bhakti? Swami says it is neither a cause of bhakti nor a consequence of bhakti. He says it is the very essence of bhakti. It is the life breath of a bhakta. That is what seva is. A, re a realization that bhakta realizes that 
God is resident in, as an altar in everyone's body. So if He's saving the person, you're saving God. This is the important thing. And Swami has said, service is the highest sadhana. So we're talking about sadhana, high sadhana. And devotion and love, you cannot ever obviously separate love from anything. Inseparable and interdependent. Only manner we can love God is by serving Him. And how do you serve Him? You buy Manu Seva is Madhu Seva. So, brothers and sisters, I will summarize what I have said. If you forget everything I have uh, come out, just come out of my mouth here, it is Swami's words. Intensify serious efforts to understand what Swami has really told us about Dharma. A 20 minute session, a one hour session, two days we do not do justice to anyone. Look at the most obvious, don't overlook the most obvious, don't waste time into going, uh, into going into rare things. Look at the most important obvious things. If your actions are dharmic, it should uphold and sustain your organization. This organization is the vehicle through which we practice and spread from this message, and in the process, we undergo self transformation. Don't forget dharma rakshati rakshita. This is the fourth time it's been spoken, but I haven't said that this thing. Don't forget that because if you forget that when trouble comes to you, you'll say, Swami, why me? That is, why me? You, if you are protecting dharma, nothing will happen to you. And remember, Swami says, duty is not doing what you like, but loving what you have to do. And the other thing is, duty with love, deplorable, duty with love is desirable, of course, Love without duty is what we need to achieve in the end. Baba says, it's not important that you love me, it's more important that I love you. We can say, Swami, I love you a thousand times and do all funny things that we want to do. It does not carry any weight unless Swami really loves you. Then how can you capture Swami in your heart? Swami says, Parokkara Mitam Sharikram, this is the same written in hospitals. He says, I've given my body, I've given you body so that you can be of help to others to lift their burden. He said, no, not even that. I've given you my uh, you this body so you can destroy this body in the service of humanity. And Swami is the prime example of that. He gave himself away, he didn't worry about age, whatever he went through, for whatever reason. And lastly, brothers and sisters, Swami is most one of the most popular uh, uh, basic slokas. Is the Nanma Karuna Sloka, where he says it's not by action, nor by having offsprings or by wealth, uh, but by only renunciation, by fear alone, that you can attain more happiness. And that's all I have to say, brothers and sisters. God bless you all. So, I mean, thank you for very much for making this work, uh, as I do not know if things were mentioned here. Yes, sir.